Hi, welcome to the ZGMK 67S video. What's up guys, Sauce here. Hope your day's going well. So today we'll be building a budget keyboard with the Zia GMK 67S. There are so many different budget keyboards that you can get today, but the GMK67 stands out always. This one right here is the latest version, and it is a budget keyboard as well. I've seen it for different prices. It's supposed to be like $50, but I've seen others say it's $30 in their country. So depending on where you live, the price will be different. This version of the Zero GMK67 is the S, and I guess the S stands for screen because this version does come with a screen instead of a knob. If you're a fan of the screen and you would like a GIF on your keyboard, it's worth it, but if you don't really care about the screen, I recommend going with the Zia GMK67 because the knob is really useful. And from my experience using this keyboard, I really did miss the knob, even though the screen was really cool. I'll give you my full thoughts later on in the video, so let's get started. So let's get started with what's in the box. As usual, it comes with the manual, which nobody ever uses, but it comes with the manual and it does come with a keycap and switch puller and a braided cable. It's not coiled, but it's braided. And it does actually feel high quality for the price. And then the Zuya GMK 67S. As you can see, similar materials are used, but it does have this cool new thing where it hides the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. It's actually pretty neat. If you thought you had trouble opening the Zuya GMK 67, this one is even harder to open. Oh, brother. But this is a tri-mode keyboard, which is 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth, and the USB-C cable. And for the switches, I went with the Aqua Lavender Purple V3 Pro. These are tactile switches and they're really good. I won't talk too much about the switches because I do already have a full length video on these switches, but I will put the specs right here. Also keep in mind, you don't have to get these specific switches. You can get other switches that are within your budget. One thing I want you to be aware of is when you're putting the switches on, be careful. Make sure you have it aligned properly. And for the keycaps, I went with this really budget friendly keycap set that are $14. They're soy milk themed and I like the colors. It really goes well with the black. And now here's what the keyboard sounds like stock. The stabilizers for the GMK67 aren't really good. If you can replace them, please do replace them. If you can't replace them, then the best you can do is lubing them. And I added the tape mod to it because I already had it open. It just makes it sound better slightly. For lubing, I use the GPL205 grade zero for the plastic pieces and dielectric grease for the metal pieces. I did end up trying the keyboard with these Cherry Profile keycaps. If you don't like Cherry or XDA Profile keycaps, you can use whatever Profile keycaps you like. It will sound a bit different though. This theme right here looks really cool. If you're not a fan of tactile switches, you don't have to get these switches. You can do the KTT Kang Whites. Those are really good in their budget as well. And this is what it sounds like.
And for my final thoughts, I think this keyboard is really good. If you're looking for a high quality keyboard as a starter keyboard, this you can't go wrong with this keyboard. It's literally plug and play. The only downside to this keyboard that I can honestly tell you, well, the only two downsides is opening the keyboard and the stabilizers. The stabilizers are obviously really bad. As you can see from the sound test, there is like a clicking noise that you'll hear. But I mean, for the price, you can't expect everything to be perfect. This is probably close enough to perfect for the price. I will tell you this, the Ala F75 is $70. That's $20 more than this and you get a better keyboard, okay? If you wanna build a keyboard from scratch, yes, go with this. But if you don't care about having a keyboard from scratch or building a keyboard from scratch, go with the F75, the Ala F75. But if you can get this keyboard for under 30 or under $40, I'd say go ahead and get this keyboard. Also, as I said, if you don't care about the screen, please go with the GMK67, the regular one, because the knob is really useful. For some reason, I also feel like the stabilizers on this one is actually worse than the regular GMK67. The GMK67S is a great keyboard because of the screen and it gives you all these high quality things for the price, but there are some downsides and I'm letting you know before you make this purchase. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment below, are you getting this keyboard? Quick note, the free wallpapers for this month did release. If you'd like to support the channel, you can get the Elite version. And I do also have a giveaway going on on my website. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.